Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast on the future of business and technology. Today's topic is the amazing ways Heineken is using generative artificial intelligence to reshape the beer industry. And to help me untangle this, I'm joined by Tony Costella, who is the Global Consumer and Markets Insights Director at Heineken. Hi, Tony. Hi, good afternoon. It's so lovely to have you with us. For anyone who doesn't know Heineken, Heineken is a globally renowned Dutch brewing company founded in 1864, known for its premium quality beers and ciders. And Heineken employs over 80,000 people, owns over 160 breweries in more than 70 countries, and produces over 300 different beers and ciders, including, including the famous Heineken, but also Amstel, Desperados, Tiger, Sol, B Bira, Moretti, and Strongbow. So, Tony, this is a super exciting topic, talking about generative AI. Before we get into this, maybe you can let us know where you're joining us from today. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, <coughs> sitting here in Amsterdam, uh, a bit of sunshine, maybe the last we'll see of the year here. <laughs> Hopefully not, but uh, but yeah, here here in Amsterdam. Very good. So, I would love to understand in what ways Heineken is using generative AI throughout the organization. What are some of the the key use cases that you've identified? Yeah, sure. So there there, there are many, um, and it's. it's such an exciting technology uh, and I think we're, we're all learning uh, about the, the different use cases and where it can have the, the biggest and most positive impact uh, well, uh, while at the same time the technology is developing and, and learning all the caveats. Um, so there's a lot of experimentation going on. Uh, I, I sit in the insights function so we've been using it extensively, uh, really helping to um, uh, understand consumer needs, uh, mm. especially, um, and helping us, We uh, uh, a large company like Heineken, we have hundreds of thousands of, uh, of uh, documents and insight uh, of documents and uh, that help us understand consumer needs around the world. Mm. That's where Gen AI can be really helpful, helping us to, to summarize some of those and bring those to the surface. So that's been yeah. one of the, the first and, and biggest use cases. Mm. Um, but, but we're also looking at, it's also helping us in um, sales and in, in helping to, to understand and think through um, yeah, next next actions for sales uh, sales staff. We're, we're using it in, in marketing and helping us think through and, and um, uh, develop new propositions. Uh, we're using it a lot internally to help us saving time with uh, um, writing presentations and things like that mm -hmm. internally. So we're, we're using it in in all uh, in a number of places across the company, but relatively um, steadily as we as we understand where it can have the biggest impact and and understanding all the caveats. Yeah, I'd love to know a little bit more about how you're using generative AI across the different departments and and maybe look at a few examples that really highlight the benefits of the technology. Yeah, sure. So maybe I can I can start with uh, with that example of of how we're and that's one we're we're more advanced on is is really um, the knowledge management. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and a large as I mentioned, we have literally hundreds of thousands of of documents helping us understand consumer preferences, um, what their consumer needs are, what their perception of our brands are, etc. And until now, this has all been stored online. We, we've always had a, a large knowledge repository with, mm. with uh, those hundreds of thousands of documents, but you had to know exactly what you were looking for to be able to get any insight out. Mm. Now we've worked with our, uh, our partners to develop an, uh, a Gen AI engine on top of all of that, that you, we can ask in real language um, a business question uh, and get real responses back um, that references this is where we've got that information from as well. So we know it makes it so much easier for somebody who's trying to, who's sitting and trying to understand you know, what do we know about, for example, yeah, just as what do we know about Gen Z's uh, perception of, of our beers in a certain country, instead of having to know exactly where to find it, who to ask, you can just go to the 
uh, to the platform and it tells us and gives a, a, you know, a proper answer in, in real language of what we understand um, and shows you where all of that information came from. So that's an, an incredible time saver for us and making yeah, sure that we're getting it's interesting. It's interesting because this has been the holy grail of knowledge management for so many years. We've always wanted to store all the information in a repository, but getting it out of it in a meaningful way has always been super difficult. So I guess generative AI is a real game changer in that environment. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you um, have any other examples across other departments? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, we're, uh, we've also been, and there's a lot of experimentation happening. So for in um, innovation, we're, um, we're helping, you know, we're again using that same knowledge base understanding. Uh, um, uh, if you look in a certain uh, area of innovation, a territory that we we're interested in developing a new proposition for, help having um, Gen AI to help us um, fine tune concepts that we're writing there. That's one of the beauties of, of Gen AI is that it's been trained um, and the models have been trained on um, real consumer um, language. And that's often the difficulty for, for companies is how do you write something in, in a language that, that is really consumer language rather than using you know, our, our jargon all the time. You know, we, we, we sit and live and breathe beer day in, day out. Real, real consumers don't. They, they, <laughs> they speak in real consumer language. And, and that's Gen AI can be really helpful in that, in, in articulating something in a way that is, that is meaningful to, to real people. Yeah, so that's a, a, another example. Mm, very good. And then in terms of benefits, then I know you've just said you, you started to experiment in lots of departments, but you've used it a bit more extensively in the insights function. So what are some of the benefits that Heineken has seen from implementing generative AI? And maybe are there any unexpected advantages or insights that you've gained from this? Yeah. Um, a, a, a few. I mean, I, I think the first is you know, what, what people are looking at first and foremost is the, the speed and the um, efficiencies that we can get in cost and speed by uh, by, by using the, the tools. As I say, if, if some simple things like being able to, to to get access to the information we have and be able to pull it out so quickly make, makes life. Um, yeah, it just makes it so much quicker for people to get to insights, not having to trawl through thousands of documents. Frankly, we're also saving money because people are realizing, oh, we've actually already researched this. We already have some, some insights here. Whereas in the past, they might have given up trying to find something and then just gone and, and, and run some fresh research. So so there's some immediate uh, uh, savings there, which we, we hadn't um, uh, realized that we're, we're going to come by by implementing this, but immediately we, we've seen um, so that there's that. Some of the that I guess is the more efficiencies and um, you know, costs and time, and we see that across a few other places. I mentioned uh, presentation writing, being able to summarize long documents to make it easier for people. There's lots around that efficiency space. Mm. What for me is more interesting though is how we can um, start seeing improvements in quality. How we can um, get to better solutions than we might have done otherwise. And, and that's where we're beginning to, to experiment and and, um, uh, and look for where Gen AI can not just make things quicker and easier, but make things better for us as well. Um, yeah, we're still learning, but I think you know, a specific example, like the one I, I just talked, the fact that we're, we've done some parallel experiments of, of concepts for new innovations that have been developed just by our marketeers versus those that have been generated by a gen ai um, um, and then a third leg versus those that have been um, created by a human with the help of gen ai um, and what's interesting is um, you know, we definitely are getting better when when we have the support of gen ai is getting us to better solutions than either the human alone or the computer alone. Um, so we, we're definitely beginning to see some of those those benefits already. Interesting. <clears throat> so when you talk about innovations, what type of innovations are you talking about? So as an example, this could be if we're thinking about what's the the um, yeah a, a new 
uh, zero zero be a proposition that we might want to, to launch, then um, how might we articulate that? What might be the specific benefits that we want to, to talk about to consumers? Um, then we would typically write a, a concept that, that could articulate that and we can test to understand whether th this is something that consumers are really interested in or not. Um, and you know, writing that in a way that that consumers really say yes, that's what I want, or no, it's it, get, getting that clear understanding of of um, of what consumers want. The Gen I is helping us to articulate that in a way that that is meaningful. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> it's really encouraging to hear that it is human plus Gen AI that are delivering the the best results. And I've been a, a, a big <clears throat> advocate for augmenting people's jobs leveraging the best of humans leveraging the best of gen ai to bring them together to really accelerate and and give us superpowers and do amazing things and things that humans on their own couldn't do and machines on their own couldn't do i'd i'd love to know a little bit more about the differences that you have seen between content generated just by um ai just by humans and then how was it better the, the way that humans and ai have worked together sure um so i think what we saw when we initially just set the machines free and we gave uh you know, put an, a gen ai engine on top of all of our insights is it was um quickly getting to concepts that were um would score very highly with consumers but either were not very realistic they're not necessarily coherent initially and and the the um uh the gen ais are improving all the time but initially you might have something that where the idea would start off with an insight and then talk about a benefit that was unrelated to that so i try to think of a, a an example but where um you might talk about oh uh the a, a key insight that you would reference might be that um uh um you know i when i'm out in the evening um i only want to i don't want to have too much to drink because um yeah i, I need to be in control of myself uh towards the end of the evening um but then the benefit it might that, that it would then talk about is introducing a new a new beer that is uh has a greater flavor that you'll enjoy more it's like but that that doesn't make sense uh, in of itself. So some simple things like that, that it was kind of getting the individual, it was kind of um, optimizing each part one by one, uh, but not coming with a, a, a fully coherent proposition. That's already improved a lot. And we've been working with the, the engines to, to get better at that. Um, on the other side, it was always, as I mentioned before, always doing that in, in real consumer language. Um, so it, very simplistically those are some of the differences is is uh um up until now that the gen ai is very good at at doing exactly what it's told and uh and finding a very articulate way uh and writing these things very nicely but if you you have to be super careful in how you write that prompt to make sure you get something that's sensible that comes out of it so and that's where over time we're discovering that that human and AI and the the interaction between them and, and, and iterations to get to a better solution uh, is is typically giving us much better results than than either on their own. And you just talked about prompts, which is a super important topic, something I, I've written extensively about and people want to understand a little bit better about how you create and write good prompts that get the best out of those gen AI engines. Um, how, how has Heineken approached this? Have you given people training or do you just let people experiment with this? How have you addressed that in, inside the organization? Yeah, I mean, I th and I think a, a lot of organizations have gone through this uh, in the in the last uh, 18 months, two years or so. And initially, yeah, people playing and finding and, and getting nonsensical uh, uh, results and hallucinations and um, and less relevant uh, and not the right context. Uh, I think we we have um, spent some time, at least with the within the insights department, who are, you know, as I said, one of the heaviest users of training and saying this 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 is examples of how you can get to to better um, 
to better prompts that are going to give you more meaningful uh, answers, giving the, the AI engine the context of how you want it to answer uh, helps so much in getting something uh, much stronger in the first place. Um, so we've done some very basic training with our teams, um, but um, but what we've also done is realize that this is is something that we we need to to do more of. So we're thinking, how do we uh, make this a a more standardized program, and that we're updating it because this is the the technology is is um, is evolving so rapidly, um, and the opportunities of of how we can use that are evolving so quickly that we want to make sure that everybody's staying on top of it. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, from what you've learned so far, do you have any top tips to share in terms of prompt writing and and how to get better value out of those Gen AI engines? Yeah, I, I think for for us, I mean, we've been um, trying to help people see you just need to help the machines understand what it is that you want. So, mm -hmm. um, so as I say, stepping back and saying, how do you want it to answer and, and saying, hey, imagine you're a, uh, a marketing manager or imagine you're a, um, an insights lead. Uh, so you've, giving that context to the machine so it answers in that way, surprisingly, but uh, but wonderfully <laughs> improves the quality of the results you get so much. Mm -hmm. And then being very clear on the output and do you want a, um, and this was was a, a, a big leap forward when we moved from just um, allowing the machine to freely give its response to saying, please give the response in the form of a, um, a SWOT analysis, so strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You suddenly go from getting a, a long passage that, um, that gives some interesting insight to a, a, a super clear um, response that also balances because this is the one thing that we were finding a, a lot initially, is that the um, the Gen AI can be very um, tends to have a bias towards positivity, and so loves giving you whatever you ask and and ask for it, for its opinions and ask you ask where you ask to to uh, about a topic. It will tend to give you the very positive side of whatever that topic is always challenging it and, and asking it to challenge itself in the response and say and, and give the counter arguments you get much richer responses so that example of asking to to summarize a topic in a, or a, a an area in terms of a SWOT analysis suddenly you get a different response and you get you get both sides of the discussion rather than than just uh, the purely positive which is much much more helpful yeah, I, <clears throat> very, very useful advice and one that I would echo all the time. I've recently written a few articles on how to write good prompts and, and giving it a persona, being clear about outputs is so, so important. The more context you can give it, the better. <clears throat> and I always say to people, the AIs are super powerful, but one thing they can't do is they can't read your mind. So you yes. need to give them information of what you want. And this is where the human AI collaboration really comes in. Absolutely. Um, you talked about your gen AI engines. <clears throat> the other thing that makes these engines more powerful is to have them tailored to your organization, have them trained on your own data, have it, yeah. have sandboxed versions of them. So I'd love to understand what tool you're using, how you've potentially ta tailored this to, to your environment. Yeah. So, and, and maybe I can go back to that, that first example of the knowledge management. Um, and um, we, we work with a, a partner, Stravito, who have, have helped us to develop um, uh, and we, they've been our long-term partner on knowledge management, but they've really helped us build the Gen AI that works for us. Um, and some specific things within that is that rather than, as I say, we've got hundreds of thousands of fantastic documents on there that it that can reference and that it's using. So that's the first thing is that you know, all the data that we're using is our data. So, and that gives us a little bit of confidence as well to make sure that we're not uh, getting into potential difficulties with uh, uh, you know, uh, misusing other people's data and things like that. So that's already one start. But what we can also do within that is we create something called collections. So I mentioned uh, talking about Gen Z. So we created a collection all about uh, uh, Gen Z consumers um, and 
made sure that we were, were filling that with, instead of hundreds of thousands, it's still a couple of hundred documents, but a couple of hundred documents that are very specifically about that cohort of consumers. And then we can run the AI um, assistant uh, and ask it to refer just to that part of that um, subset of, of all of our information, which makes the results, again, much more relevant uh, and useful for us. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and that's what we're doing is helping to create these, these mini areas and, and subsections of, of our entire knowledge base so that we can have, you can run the assistant either on everything we know, but the more granular and the, the uh, and when you send it to specific areas where you know that's going to have much richer data, you get much richer responses. Mm, that's, yeah, it's a very good idea. And this is for, for me such a big opportunity that I don't see across more corporate organizations. They really leverage their internal knowledge assets and use them to bring them into their generative AI system. So that's really good to hear. Um, looking then ahead, how do you anticipate Heineken to benefit from, from generative AI moving forward? What, what other areas do you see that you think this is, this is exciting? This is where we could use AI. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're beginning to, to start forming visions that the technology isn't quite ready for yet, but we, where we see it going and we're preparing for, um, uh, I certainly see a vision of a future where gen AI really can be, and we already call our, um, uh, that, knowledge management assistant we call her uh internally it's knowledge and insight management so kim for short so mm. we have the the kim assistant um and for, for us in the future you know uh, and it's not that far off we there will be uh instead of us having to have um well as well as having insights people working with each of the the teams you can imagine that a brand manager or a, an innovation uh manager has their own has their Kim assistant that's always with them that they that's there as a chatbot that they can talk to that is helping them all the way through. So um, we're beginning to um, to to work out how we can build that. And and the gap at the moment is where it's great and and Gen AI is fantastic at the moment is on um, uh, large the large language model. So where we've got loads of text and being able to summarize that where it's missing at the moment is on some on more structured data alongside so what i imagine in the future is and where it's struggling today is if i was a brand manager saying can you help me write a brand plan um and that's for me the end point we get to is you have an assistant that's there that can help a, as an example a brand manager to write their their strategic plan and uh, marketing plan for the next year and it can we can train it in a way that it knows how to understand all of the data that we have, what's our market share, what's the growth in the market, where are the opportunity areas, et cetera, um, and start to give directions to the brand manager as, as to what they could be doing to, to drive growth. Um, we're not there yet, um, but that's the kind of direction we, we see it going in is that, you know, you, you mentioned it earlier, the, the augmented um, uh, human AI, where the the human is really adding instead of you know, all the parts of the of everybody's job that is the, the annoying hard parts of having to go and find the right data points of having to understand what the the growth models are having to understand all the best practices all of that hard work is done by the um, ai agent so that the human can add the magic that is what you need to add on top to get to something really creative, to get to something that's going to be breakthrough that the AI can't do. Right? Um, so that's that's the vision that we have is how you know everything that is time consuming and um, important, but but um, can be done by machines is we find a way to do that so that the humans are doing what humans can do and the AI can't, which is the really the the thinking the in the dreaming and the and the um, creativity that gives the real magic. 
Yeah, and for me, the this is where the promise of hybrid AI comes in as well, where we use large language models for some of the things they are good at, but using traditional machine learning models for analyzing the more structured data and being able to yeah. break this up and combining the results. This is, I think, exactly. the leading edge where excite, lots of exciting innovation is taking place right now. Yeah, absolutely. The other challenge for organizations is making sure that this technology is used responsibly and ethically. Um, I would love to better understand if and what policies or best practices Heineken has put in place to ensure that AI is used responsibly and in an ethical way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's a, it's such an emergent area that we're being a little bit rightfully cautious. Um, there are there's more capability in in these tools than we're using right now because we want to be sure that we're doing things in the right way. As an example, you know we're very clear nothing that ends up as being uh, uh, you know, out in the marketplace is is AI generated right now. Um, uh, for sure, may it come in the future? Might it be that AI is is creating advertising? It's possible. It's possible to do that now. We're not sure yet because we haven't understood all of the the, the ethical concerns. Are we, you know, making sure that we're um, correctly paying uh, talents that we're not, you know, doing things um, uh, uh, unfairly uh, in the industry? So right now, we're we're, we're staying away from that. Uh, and we're folk, most of our use cases are focused more internally and making sure that we're you know, saving time from our own employees um, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it, but it is a, a huge concern. Yeah, another is around bias, and um, of course we know that the uh, today at least, and it's again changing rapidly. But a lot of the large language models have been trained on uh, you know, a smaller set, mainly English language, certain countries. So we know that there are some of those biases and a lot of it is around training uh, and making sure people are aware of that. Um, because as ever, you know, there are biases in, in virtually everything that you do. There's biases in research that we're all very used to, but it's about making sure people understand what those biases are so that they're, they're taking those into account. But, um, we're, what we're also doing is is very actively participating with some of the industry uh, bodies like the World Federation of Advertising, WFA, uh, and making sure that we get industry-wide um, guidelines in place so that we are, um, and really driving that so that we get some clarity in this and to make sure that we and everybody in, in the industry is, is, uh, is moving in the right direction. And do you have specific policies in place of what people can do and can't do with Gen AI and how they're using it and what tools they can use and can't use? Yeah, I mean, I think we, uh, uh, yeah, another one is around privacy. So we're obviously in making sure that people are not um, you know, putting um, anything onto the uh, open uh, tools like, um, like ChatGPT directly that could um you know go again you know, give away <laughs> any of our secrets or or uh, unintentionally um break any gdpr or other uh, kind of things so we're very cautious about that um we've got a lot of in in turn so we've got a lot of those tools internally so that they're kind of uh, behind our firewall so that we're not um uh, sharing things so that there are definitely guidelines in that area as i mentioned we're very uh, at the moment, we've got very clear, strict guidelines about what can for um, what can be produced in advertising, and the fact that uh, you know even in um, not just um, commercials but in uh, print and um, um, in store uh, materials that packaging everything has to be developed by humans right now, and they may use tools in their process that can help them, but the, what, what goes out has to be um, uh, for the moment uh, real. So we're not putting out things that are AI generated um, uh, until we at least have some clarity on where that goes. But those, those are a couple of things for sure. Yeah, that's good, good to hear. Another area that 
usually as part of a successful Gen I implementation is having the right partners in place because organizations very often haven't got the expertise, the skills, the bandwidth to, to do it all. And partnering with um, technology partners usually helps to enhance their own AI capabilities. Is this something you've been doing? Um, yes. Um uh, with with a number, uh, both kind of partnering um, as well as you know buying off the shelf solutions uh, where where it makes sense. I, you know, I mentioned Stravita that we're working with um, uh, in the insights department who are um, behind our stuff. We work a lot with Microsoft, or a key uh, technology partner of ours. So we you know, the co-pilot solution that they have, we're, uh, we're we're working with and using that as a basis for a number of other uh, of our own internal developments um, and piping together various um, tools uh, in, in, into those. So yeah, we, we're, those would be the main ones that come to mind, but but yeah, we're absolutely partnering. We don't have the, the capability to build everything ourselves, um, although we're, we're also are doing some things where we're building our own um, uh, tools where it makes sense, but, um, but it's a combination. I'd, I'd love to know your views on the trends that you see as having a potential impact for the overall beer industry. So are there any wider trends that you're keeping an eye on, both technology trends and wider trends that you think they are some of the key things that will define the industry over the coming years? Yeah, I mean, I think it, one of the things that, I, that I'm looking at a lot in, in my role as the, the head of insights is, is thinking about how technology impacts consumers more broadly um you know we we've been doing a lot of work looking at the um the, the loneliness epidemic and how um you know with the 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 increased usage of of smartphones but more generally and it's you know, it's on the one hand so exciting all of the the ways that you can interact um you can create for example um uh AI buddies that you can that you can uh, connect with. Um, it, on the one hand, it's really exciting. I as a as as a technophile, I, I love those things and get very excited by them. On the other hand, I find it very frightening as a as a father of two teenage daughters mm -hmm. around what this means for longer term for real human connection. And as a beer company that's very much rooted in in bringing people together and social connection, that's something we're we're very um, aware of and, mm. and are tracking very closely to understand how this might impact society more broadly. And overall beer trends, what, what are you seeing in the industry? It's, it's very interesting um, and I guess linked a little bit with the, the technology and, and the, the ease of, um, of people connecting around the world. Um, I mentioned we talk a lot about Gen Z, but seeing how younger generations who are truly digital natives, um, uh, how they connect with each other um, and how um, differences around the world um, uh, uh, are manifesting itself quite differently today. We see um, uh, the younger generation are much more connected globally uh, than they were a generation ago, um, which is very interesting for, for big brands uh, and for, for beer companies. You know, the, um, we, we're seeing um, you know, that it's impossible to, you know, used to beer is historically a very, very local uh, uh, industry. Um, and uh, the vast majority of the biggest beers in the world were, were very local beers. Heineken was one of the few truly global. We're increasingly seeing the world shrinking in many ways um, with, um, uh, with those bigger global brands having more impact. You know, we, we, you know, uh, one of our, our own beers, Bira Moretti, has, has grown incredibly quickly across a number of European markets. Um, uh, whereas maybe a, a generation ago, people were more focused on wanting their own uh, local beers. There's a lot more openness to enjoying the, the Italian uh, and the top Italian beer um, than there was. Uh, so that's you know, that's an example of a trend that I think has been driven from from that um, digital uh, openness. 
Interesting. Thank you so much, Tony, for your time today. That was truly fascinating. It's lovely to see how how big beer companies like Heineken are now using technology like technology like generative AI. So that I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great to speak to you this afternoon. Same here. And anyone who ever wants to re-watch this conversation, simply head to my YouTube channel or to any of the podcast plus podcast platforms where you can watch the or listen to the audio only version as well. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.